Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm sure you are still basking in the blessings, loads of blessings that we all harnessed and acquired, garnered last month when we had our 21 day fasting and the prayer program. It's still an idyllic era of conception and parturition, and we're having a March edition, March 2021 edition. You are highly welcome. This edition is titled, or you could say the theme of this edition is Treasury of the Trailblazer. Treasury of the Trailblazer, and uh, it promises to be a great time we are spending the next three days being in the presence of the Lord, fasting and praying and uh, gathering in clusters and places, connecting online to listening to our pastor who will be teaching us how to lead a holy life. I want you to bow down your heads right now as we commit the moment into the hands of God and we then invite the chorus leaders for the time of worship. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for who you are. Thank you who has kept us in the month of January, stroke month of February, when the teaching on idyllic era started. Father, thank you for granting us that great opportunity to have come in your presence for 21 days and the blessings, the testimonies are still coming in. Lord, this is another month. We are marching into a time of taking and harnessing more of the blessings that have been accrued. Lord, I pray that all that have connected from all the places, Lord, you will bless them and touch their lives in this edition. Glory be to your name for your servant you will use. Thank you for every gadget and instrument we, that we are using for this transmission. We commit into your hands. Lord, as we broadcast to the rest of our brethren, living far and wide all over the continents of the world i pray for you more of your blessing upon them as the music ministers will come on board use them O oh lord to bless our souls as we worship you glory be to your name for i know you've answered for we have prayed in jesus name amen oh, glory 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 to the lord oh, glory. Glory, glory to the Father. Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our glory. Glory, 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 glory to, to the God, our glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All glory. Son, take glory only goes now forevermore. Take glory, Father. Mm, take, take glory, Son. son. Take, take glory, glory only goes now forevermore. Now forevermore. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory only goes now forevermore. forevermore. We lift your name higher. 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 We lift your name We lift your name the Lord. We thank God for that wonderful time of praise and worship in his presence. If you are just connecting, you are on to the idyllic era for conception and parturition, March edition 2021. You are highly welcome. We welcome you wherever you are connecting from. We are happy you are here. God bless you for connecting. It takes place 6 p.m. every day from March 1st to March 3rd. I believe you are going to connect your friends and families to enjoy this moment and be blessed. Now, as we wait for the moment of the word, before we usher in the music ministers, 
I want you to bow down your heads wherever you are. So we pray. Father, we bless your name. I want you to begin to talk to God and say, Father, we have come again in this month of March. Today happens to be the first day in the month of March. My blessing is guaranteed. I will not go the way I came. We are marching forward in the month of March. The, month, the year 2021 has already been conquered because we started well. On that day, when Jehoshaphat and the rest of the army conquered, not that they conquered, but you ate them, O oh Lord, and you killed their enemies, they only marched in to the spoil. And we are marching in to the spoil this month and the rest of the month in the remaining, in the remaining part of the year. Begin to talk to God and say, Father, that we are committing the year into your hands, and you know you are, we know you are going to bless us. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer, and say, in this month, greater will come, for the path of a righteous man shine brighter and brighter. Last month is just a beginning. This month, I'm going to shine brighter. Begin to make that prayer, and the Lord bless you. Now, open your Bible with me as I read a portion of the scripture that will make us pray more. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before your life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live therefore choose life remember we are talking about the thorns and thistles in the untreated tongue and that tongue the Bible tells us that though it is one of the smallest members of the body Yet, death and life are residing in the power of the tongue. I believe you are here to choose life. Now I want you to talk to God and say, Father, I choose life. I choose life. I choose life. For the rest of the year, I choose life. The power of the tongue. I choose life. Let anything that has to be tested, anything that has to be tongues, upon me, upon my tongue, let them be done away. Through the cleansing of your word. I want to subject myself to a cleansing moment. Begin to pray that prayer and say, Lord, I know through your word you will grant cleansing right now that I can speak life anywhere I go to, my, to myself, to my generation, and to my generation on board. Thank you, Father, for I know you answered for what I prayed. If you have prayed that prayer with us, whatever you are connecting, I want you to lift up your hands as we pray. Father, we thank you for a moment like this you granted us opportunity oh lord to come to that stage where you will bless us again this month the month of march has been earmarked for great things therefore lord as we started and started well in the first fruit fast bless us the more in the name of jesus christ as we sit down i will invite the music ministers who will create that atmosphere that will usher in the moment for the world. God bless you as you stay tuned.
the Lord. We bless the Almighty God who has made it possible for us to participate and partake of the blessings of this March edition of the idyllic era of conception and parturition. We welcome you all connecting from the parishes and uh, from the various locations outside this country. The precious brethren correcting from US, Canada, UK, UAE, Angola, South Africa, Australia, and wherever you are collecting from outside in the country, you are highly appreciated. And I'm trusting the God of heaven who blessed you in the first era, the first session of our program to also bless you even more abundantly today and through these three days exercise. As you have been told, the theme of this exercise is the treasury of the trailblazer. We are going to show what a trailblazer like the watchman should have. And I'm trusting that as you pay attention and connect tomorrow and the final day, the third day, the Lord will not allow you to remain the same. Knowledge is power. And once you have power, progress and success is guaranteed with the addition of wisdom which is available. So, bow our heads as we pray. All glorious Father, we bless you, the keeper of covenant, who does exceeding abundantly more than we ask of him. The God that has called us with a calling that is unfeigned, who has promised and who will not fail. He that keeps Israel that neither sleep nor slumbers. He that has called a watchman to be the trailblazer of this era, this very end of the church age. Who also has called the watchman to be the instrument of blessings to others. You will make watchmen whom they should be. Therefore, Lord, I pray that as your word comes out from the pulpit of many colors, that you will reach all and sundry, all participants, all that will listen to this message, you will reach them and uh, ensure that what you proposed to accomplish through this exercise is realized or accomplished in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says that they shall be taught of the Lord. I therefore request that your spirit will take hold, absolute control of me, to minister life to all hearers. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for answering my prayers. Reach to the person who is alone, who connected from his house, from the place of residence, from the place of business. Reach to the people in the church who are gathering together, also connected. Your word is timeless. Therefore, whatever time this word reaches anybody, let it carry its efficacy that the people that are here will have heard indeed in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answering my prayers as I have prayed in Jesus' name. And amen. If you are there in the fellowship, you are rising, please sit down as we go to the scriptures. Topic or theme of the program once more is the treasury of the trailblazer. The treasury is simply a place where treasure is kept. A place where stores of wealth are kept. That's the treasury. A place where wealth is kept. Stores of wealth. Or where something precious, something highly valuable, a collection of highly valuable and delightful things. That place is the treasury. And then the third blazer is simply a leader or pioneer in a particular field. A person that goes to clear the road and put marks that those who are coming behind will see and reach where the trailblazer is going to. And without missing words, 
our ministry is called to be a trailblazer for the church at the end of the church age. A church that is being confronted by the hosts of darkness that have realized that their time is short. The early church confronted the host of darkness that knew they'd see her some time. We are people confronting the same host of darkness that have known that their time is short and so are more aggressive, are more determined to accomplish their nefarious, diabolical objectives. So the watchman has been called to clear the road and show the others how, what, and the way to go. Therefore, you need to pay attention. As we go to our text for that thing, which is Proverbs chapter number 18, verse number 21. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And in Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 6 through verse 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 10. Romans chapter number 10, from verse number 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The apostle writing to the brethren in the church at Rome said that the righteousness of old, the righteousness rather of the present day, is not like what was obtained of old. We are people who are limited while they walk by the rules and regulations that that control human beings. The limitations of this and that affecting them. That the righteousness that is of faith, which is the righteousness of the New Testament, does not have any limitation. It doesn't work by natural forces and natural laws. Who shall ascend that distance to bring somebody down? Who shall descend that distance to bring somebody up? It doesn't work that way. The righteousness is of faith, which says with you, in your mouth and in your heart, you have the key to accomplishing whatever you want, whatever is proper for you. In your mouth, there is power. In your heart, there is power. As you put the mouth and the heart together, you can lead a successful Christian life. So that is the righteousness of the present time, which is acceptable, which is the New Testament righteousness. In chapter 18 of Proverbs that we read, it talked about the power in the mouth, the power in the tongue. Death and life are there. The tongue has the capacity to take life or to give and to give life. To take away and to give. When it takes away, it gives death. When it gives, it genders life. That is what is there in the tongue. And uh, my text for today is, or my theme for today rather, or topic for today is tongues and thistles in the untreated tongue. Tongues and thistles in the untreated tongue. I am talking to first of all watchmen who are called to the three blazers. I'm talking to people that have resources within them that they need to know about and utilize. At the beginning of the year, 
we showed that the believer belongs to God's kingdom and is not supposed to be under the rules and regulations of natural living, under the whims and caprices of natural forces. That the believer is to walk according to the word of God. We walk by faith, not by sight. We don't live according to the dictates of our environment. We are supposed to live according to the dictates of God. And we made mention of Isaac, who at the time of famine wanted to run to Egypt. And God said, no, Isaac, don't go. Remain where you are. There is the earth, there is drought, but stay there and invest into the soil. And God gave him instruction, sow there, plant there. In that place that is dry, in that place where people say well, everything is bad, plant there. And Isaac obeyed God's word. As he obeyed God's word, he got an hundredfold. One hundredfold of what he invested. At a time of the earth, at a time of drought, at a time of famine. That is the kingdom. In the kingdom, you live by God's word. And God's word is superior to whatever forces or factors that are around you. And as a result, we got God's word at the beginning of the year, which said it is a period that is idyllic. A period of excellence. A period of pleasantness. That is God's word to us at a time of peril, at a time of dearth, at a time of drought, at a time of dangers. That is the word of God for us. And just as Isaac sowed the seed in the midst of the drought, so I will to hold to that word in the midst of the dangers. And that word will catapult us to our destination, will carry us through the challenges of the time. Now, for anybody to successfully go through the challenges of the time, that person needs to have knowledge of some rules of the kingdom. Rules that need to be applied. The person needs to have some knowledge about the dynamics of the kingdom. The play of forces. Interplay of forces in the kingdom. The person needs to know some principles. As those things are applied, the person needs to progress. And one of the things that somebody must know is about a little organ in the body. This little organ, very little, but goes a long way to determine how somebody fares. That little organ has made and has marred people. Made and marred, M-A-R. He has built and has destroyed. That little organ is no other than the tongue. We need to know about the tongue. You need to know about the power vested upon the tongue. The power inherent in the tongue. And when that is known and utilized, there in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, it says, They that love it, they that are fond of its use, they that are interested in its use, who use it, get their harvest. If you use it negatively, it will give you a negative harvest. You use it positively, it will give you a positive harvest. So, we want to show some negative, first of all, of that tongue, what you must avoid. You know its capacity or its capability, and then you prevent the negative from happening. Because if you sow negative seeds, you cannot reap what is positive. Whatever you sow, that is what you reap. If you go the way of the negative, you cannot get the positive. So the blessings of that little organ will not be harnessed. You will not be able to harvest it. So we want to look at the terrible troubles and negative things that that little member can generate. So today we are going to look at the tongues and thistles in the untreated tongue. Tomorrow, we will look at the treasure of the treated tongue. And then on the final day, we will conclude with that message, the treasury of the trailblazer. So today, we are looking at tongues and thistles in the untreated tongue. My subtext is James chapter number 3, verses 5 to 8. James 
chapter 3 from verse number 5 through verse number 8. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiled the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature as it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and had been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. That is the tongue being described. The character of the tongue. The habit of the tongue. The behavior of the tongue. A little member, small in size, but very big in ability. Little in size, but large in ability. And then he described what it is capable of doing, illustrating how a little spark can set a forest. Many of you that are in the temperate regions, we are sometimes there can be some dryness, real dryness, and a lot of strong wind. You know how a little fire at the time of dryness so for example in california little butts of the cigarette stick little fighter thrown into the forest can destroy expanse of land can take many weeks to fight that little little thing that is how the little member called the tongue can destroy can devastate and the writer under inspiration uh, James, the, the, the apostle, he said that all animals have been tamed, all kinds of animals, but man cannot naturally tame the tongue. Man cannot naturally tame the tongue. You want to naturally tame it, you are incapacitated. You will not be able. Anything you manage, that will just be a kind of little show. When challenges arise, the tongue will show that you didn't train it. You didn't tame it. There is somebody that can assist you to tame the tongue. And that is all about the message of these three days. And when that tongue is tamed, the good ability, the characteristics that are positive, good energy, positive energy of the tongue is made manifest. And then blessings of God will naturally follow. But today we are looking at what happens with the tongue that has not been treated that has not been treated that has not been refined the tongue that is still crude that is what we are talking about tongues and thistles tongues and thistles tongues and thistles are figurative of troubles things that make for trouble for pain for annoyance for irritation for sorrow for displeasure tongues and thistles the tongue is that spike that you see on a tree or on a leaf or on a stem. Sharp, spiky uh, projection. That's the tongue. Or you see it if the branch is falling down. You just see it dry. It's sharp. If you hit it hard, it pricks you. Thistles are like that family too. But this time around, they have a variety of prickly composite plants. Prickly composite plants you see a lot of sharp sharp things around them they are symbolic or figurative of matters that make for annoyance pain sorrow displeasure irritation and things that are just negative so we're looking at the negative things that emanate from an untreated tongue and it's essential for a child of god to know about this because if you don't have control of your tongue your christianity is futile in james chapter one anybody that's i'm a christian but has not brought the tongue under control cannot be with the tongue hear what god's word says james chapter one verse number 26 if any man among you seem to be religious and let not his tongue 
but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Any person that seems to be religious but does not have control of his tongue, anything can come out of his mouth. That person's religion is futile. That person's religion is worthless. Does not have any weight. No matter how long the person has been in church, no matter what the person holds in the church, the position, the person can say, I am a pastor. If a pastor does not have control of his tongue, his religion is vain. This word is God's word. He didn't make any exclusions. He didn't say, except pastors, except prophets, except evangelists. He says, if any man, any man means any man, if any person among you does not have control of his tongue, that person has weightless religion. So, this makes it important that every person that says, I'm born again, I'm a child of God, I belong to the kingdom of God, must listen attentively and ensure that by the time we finish this program, the tongue will have submitted. The scripture tells us of the destructive capability of the little tongue. Right here in verses 5 and 6 of our subtext, it states clearly in verse 5, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire the cause of nature and is set on fire of hell. That little member, the tongue, he called it boasted great things is full of words and then can generate fire that can consume and it has consumed people can consume and has consumed homes can consume and has consumed place um congregations just the mouth the tongue little tongue he says in verse six and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity a world of unrighteousness. The word iniquity there means unrighteousness. Add the care. A world of unrighteousness. That little tongue is in a, is a world of unrighteousness. Out of it can comfort anything that is unrighteousness. That is unrighteous. And the Bible says, whatever is unrighteous, every unrighteousness is sin. So that tongue is a world of sin. The crude the unrefined tongue that is why it is said when we read if you don't have control of that tongue your religion is useless if we read the amplified version of that verse 5 and verse 6 it says in the same sense the tongue is a small part of the body and yet it boasts of great things see by comparison, how great a forest is set on fire by a little spark. In comparison, see how a forest is set on fire by a little spark. Then verse 6 says, and the tongue is, in a sense, a fire. The very world of injustice and unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members as that which contaminates the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life the cycle of man's existence and is itself set on fire by hell that is the tongue set your whole body on fire can contaminate you can contaminate other people from what came, comes out of somebody's mouth some other person some other family a church is contaminated that little tongue and the hell Gehenna, sets it on fire propels it to keep on speaking so that ultimately it will destroy and will get destroyed so the believer ought to know whatever he should know about the tongue it has destroyed and uh, has been destroying things in the physical in the physical things in the spiritual spheres of life it has destroyed marital relationships it has destroyed businesses. It has made people 
to get into experiences that they never envisaged just what they said so the child of god needs to pay attention now i want you to note that the behavior of the tongue is a function of the state of the heart the behavior of the tongue is a function of the state of the heart how the heart is determines what how the tongue will behave the behavior of the tongue is determined by the state of the heart if the heart is healthy the tongue can be healthy if the heart is polluted the tongue will be polluted so the behavior of the tongue is acts how it behaves how it acts is determined by the state of the heart in Matthew chapter number 12 verse number 24 34 Matthew chapter number 12 verse number 34 oh generation of vipers how can you how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh the mouth speaking is simply the tongue moving out of the abundance of the heart so the character the behavior of the tongue is connected to the state of the heart if the heart is healthy free clean then the tongue can generate can gender good good things if the heart is polluted jesus says how can you be evil having evil heart say good things so the heart and the tongue are connected in romans chapter 10 and verse 8 you will find that connection reflected romans chapter 10 and verse 8 what but what said it this word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart the righteousness that is by faith is the word the word of faith it is in your heart and in your mouth it's not only in your mouth it is both in the heart and the mouth the heart and the mouth are connected it is what is in the heart that comes out through the mouth so if the heart is full of unbelief the tongue will generate unbelief will dispense unbelief if the heart is full of faith and the word of faith is in the heart what will emanate from the mouth are words of faith so the heart and the mouth and the tongue are connected an unrefined tongue may spread false reports when the tongue is not refined the heart is not refined if the heart is refined the tongue is refined so the state of the tongue is tied to the state of the heart if the tongue is not refined it may gender false reports what god wouldn't want his people to be involved in in exodus chapter 23 let me take you through some scriptures because we anchor on scriptures in exodus chapter 23 reading verses 1 and 2 exodus 23 verses 1 and 2 thou shalt not raise a false report put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness thou shalt not follow a multitude of the evil neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment don't get involved in false reports don't associate with people who are bearing false witnesses don't say what is not true don't join people who are doing that when the tongue is unrefined the heart is unrefined it can permit the flow out of false reports it can also gender murmuring and criticism of what one did not understand if somebody gets involved in murmuring 
and criticizing what he or she didn't understand that tongue has not been refined in numbers chapter 23 Balaam said, I cannot get involved in saying what I should not say. Je pro, uh, Numbers chapter 23, I read verse number 8. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? Or how can I defy whom the Lord has not defied? How can I curse whom God has not cursed? Anybody that opens his mouth and begins to speak derogatorily about God's servants, about God's people, that person has a tongue that has not been separated, that has not been refined. Today, speaking against God's children and God's servants is the order of the day. That's what makes the dailies to sell. The newspapers are filled with pastors and pastors and pastors. Anything about pastors, servants of God, that the world carries the day. And people take pleasure in it. If you are in the church and you are given to speaking evil of God's servants, whom God has not spoken evil of, whom God has allowed to continue to minister, you have a tongue that is uncircumcised, unrefined. Unrefined tongues do speak hurtfully if you find that from your mouth you release venoms and you say things that cause people sorrow speak hurtfully it is that your tongue is still unrefined your mouth is rotten romans chapter 3 verse number 13 romans 3 13 if we talk about prosperity and then we didn't tell you about the real wheat of prosperity then we have deceived you if we only tell you about material prosperity and physical prosperity health prosperity matrimonial prosperity and we don't tell you about the prosperity that lasts from here into eternity we have deceived you that is why we see us take time to purify the spirit man and ensure that the enemy does not hold anything against you life is short and judgment is short romans chapter 3 verse 13 their truth is an open sepulcher with their tongues they have used deceit the poison of asp is under their lips talking about what comes out from the mouth the mouth the throat is an open grave where the rotten body the carcass or corpse that is decaying is staying you know the stench that will emanate there then he says that their tongues are deceitful with their tongues they deceive and their mouths speak poison spill poison as are simply cobra the cobra that's the the the, the thing referred to as the poison of the cobra those of you that have knowledge about zoology will tell us about the kind of poison that the cobra has they call it the neophilic neurophilic poison that goes to attack the nerves and so when the poison goes it, it is not as painful as the poison of the rattlesnake which is hemophilic the one that destroys tissues the poison of asp cobra does not destroy tissue it goes and goes straight to the nerves and took the nerves paralyze the muscles of the heart and the muscles that push the lung the diaphragm and the person gasped to death silently the person is destroyed so the amount of people this kind of people when they say that thing the thing will linger in somebody's life until it knocks the person out so if you are there in the place where you are and you speak hurtfully and you destroy people's lives your tongue is unrefined proverbs chapter 26 verses 22 to 24. proverbs chapter 26 from verse number 22 through verse number 24. proverbs 26 we are still talking about hurtful if you speak to hot people verses 22 to 24 of proverbs 26 the words of a tail bearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost part of the belly bunny leaves and a wicked heart are like potsherds covered with silver dross he that hated dissembled with his lips 
and laid up the seed within him. The third bearer goes to carry news against people. He is having or she is having a mouth that hurts. Although that speak rashly and uh, abruptly who don't have control whose mouth issue every kind of statement and when they say the things they can cause confusion that tongue such tongues are all refined consider what proverbs chapter 25 verse 11 says proverbs 25 verse 11 it says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver a word fitly spoken is beautiful golden apples placed in a picture that a background of silver what a beauty that is a word fitly spoken the man the woman that has allowed the holy ghost to refine him and refine his tongue will always speak appropriately speak rightly and his words when he finishes when she finishes people will nod their head and say that you have spoken you have spoken well but people that don't have control they must say something they will say things that will rather lead to persecution if somebody speaks pretentiously somebody speaks to glorify himself or speaks to show that he is important wants to be known speaks to for ostentation that tongue is still uncircumcised in verses 20 chapter 28 verses 18 and 19 chapter 26 where we have read verses 18 and 19 first of all as a madman who casted fire brand arrows and death so is the man that deceived his neighbor and said am i not in sport somebody deceives his neighbor and say i was just joking that person is like a madman that takes fire and sets up a structure on fire and in verses 24 and 25 he that hated the same blood with his lips and laid up the seed within him when he speaketh fair believe him not for there are seven abominations in his heart whose hatred is covered by the seed his wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation here is somebody that has hatred in his heart but says something different he says ultimately that person will want to do damage he will say one thing and do another therefore don't trust him he will come and tell you how he loves you and thank god for you and tell you this and tell you that but his mind is altogether wanting to make you lose your your, your, your defense and uh, lose your guard so that he can hurt you all the people that blow people flatter people to destroy them belong to this group that speak pretentiously although that speak contentious this time around contending in your words when you see them or hear them speak you see some aggression some negative disposition of what somebody that is complaining at his quarreling and the person you see him or her from far it will seem as if he is fighting with the people he is talking to she is fighting with the person he is talking to they speak contentiously you speak and they speak back so people have tongues that have not been worked on in chapter 18 of the book of proverbs verses 6 and 7 proverbs chapter 18 verses 6 and 7 a fool's lip enter into contention and his mouth calleth for truth a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul the fool the people that don't have the fear of god in them they are fools and so he said the fool's lips will enter into contention so if you get into contention you are inclined to you are always predisposed to contention you are in the category of fools people that don't allow god to handle them and help them out anybody that speaks fully out of his mouth folly is gendered such a person has a tongue that has not been treated in isaiah chapter 9 verse number 17 isaiah chapter 9 verse 17 isaiah chapter 9 verse number 17 tongues that 
bring forth lies and folly. Isaiah chapter 9, take it from verse 16 through verse 17. For the leaders of these people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore, the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and the widows. For everyone is an hypocrite and an evil doer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this, his anger is not turned away, for in his hands is stretched out. Their leaders have misled them, and out of their mouth, foolishness emanates and says God's judgment will ultimately come upon them. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 4, 5, and 8, Jeremiah chapter 9, people that speak lies. So if you bring lies out of your mouth, it is because your tongue has not been treated. You are yet unrefined. Every unrefined tongue means unrefined heart. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 4, 5, and 8, Take ye heed every one of his neighbor and trust him not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant and every neighbor will walk with slanderers. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Verse 8. Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit one speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth but his heart in his heart he layeth his weight telling lies speak one thing but have a different thing in mind and say ah, i forgive you for that thing you said you know i had a basket heart once i have said my own it has ended but the person saying that still has a mind of avenging retaliating Anybody that does that, if the person says he's a preacher and that will come and say, I don't have anything against you, but has something that person has not been treated, his heart is still in sin, and so the tongue is in sin. And any mouth that is double tongued, any mouth that is double tongued, that double tonguing, permit me to use the word, is an expression of lack of refinement. What do we mean by double tongue? Being double tongued, presenting different views of an issue to different people. If a group of persons carrying a certain mindset come to you, the way you present that issue will be different, will be in alignment with what they are saying. And that group of opposites, opposite idea of philosophy, if they come, you will present that thing to them to sue them. Such a person is double-tongued. And deacons, workers, not to talk about pastors, are not expected to be double-tongued. In First Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 8, you should be a man of your word. Your yea should be yea. Your nay should be nay. The politicians in the country of Nigeria are double-tongued. That is why you see them jump from party to party. They want to rule. So however they can rule, let it be. If it means withdrawing what they have said before, what they have promised, their ideology that they have stood for over the years, if it means withdrawing it to rule, they will withdraw it and take the opposite so that they can rule. Some people are double-tongued. A Christian is not supposed to be double-tongued. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, I read verse number 8. 1 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse 8. I read, Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre. Deacons, workers in the house of God, must not be double-tongued. The pastor, the minister, the person that is not a worker, a Christian, these qualifications being given for people who are working is the qualification for every Christian. It is just that by the time you have taken the place of responsibility, you are supposed to have arrived at these conditionalities stated. It doesn't mean that it is only those who are deacons that it is required of to, not to be double-tongued. It is required of every believer. Now, for you to come to responsibility, it should be seen that these demands of God are already operational in your life. Where it is said that the bishop must be a husband of one wife, it's not only for bishop, it's for every child of God. Now, if you come to that level of being 
an overseer, it is expected that by that time you should have got your restriction and you should have had a single wife. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that that condition is for only that position. It is for every believer. So the child of God is not supposed to be double tongued. In the people, people that talk back, talking back, your boss talks and you 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 you, you, you slam him back. Somebody above you talks and then you talk back. Husband talks, I talk back. Wife talks, I talk back. All that are evidences of lack of purification of the tongue. In Titus chapter 2 and verse 9. Titus chapter 2 verse 9. As a servant, you don't talk back to your master. Nobody should be talking back. In verse 9. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things not answering again not talking back somebody above you talks maybe talks very clearly you don't talk back the tongue that has been uh, sanctified that has been purified that has been refined will not permit any talking back i said at the beginning we said that the tongue is connected to the heart the state of the heart determines the state of the tongue so talking back show that your heart still has a problem. Any mouth that is given to witticism, vulgarity, and obscenities. Witticism. W-I-T-T-I-C-I-S-M. Witticism. Or vulgarity and obscenity. Witticism has to do with being jackals, being given to, being funny. Every time you will just say things that will keep people laughing. Every time. In everything, you will bring out things that will make people to be laughing. So wherever you are, people are just laughing. That is jesting. If the tongue is refined, you are not given to witticism. Neither to vulgarity. Being vulgar means being crude, being unrefined. Making statements that are crude, that shouldn't come out from the mouth of a decent man. Or obscenities, the things that are suggestive of moral looseness coming from their mouth. There are mouths that are dirty. When the people open it, the words that come out are corrupt, suggesting suggesting immorality. And the thing is coming from that mouth. That tongue is crude. That tongue has not tasted of the refining power of God. At whatever condition you are, for you to bring out rotten words from your mouth, immoral words from your mouth, it shows that that tongue has not been refined and needs to be refined. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 4. Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading verse 4. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 4. This is a time of sanctification by the agency of the world. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not covenant, but rather giving of thanks. Just as fornication shouldn't be found in your midst, and uncleanness and covetousness shouldn't be there, so also should there not be filthiness. Vulgar words are filthy words. They are, belong to the family of the filthy. Obscene language is filthy. Language you speak and somebody gets touched. There are people when they are talking to single brothers and sisters, they will be talking about marital relationship and get the children polluted. Thing that should be should be set for people who are married, they will be talking and get even into descriptions and get people polluted. Their tongues get people polluted. That is because such tongues have not been refined. So as a minister, as a testifier, and people that write books, I write columns in the newspapers or whatever, if you bring out vulgarities that people read, and as a result of what they have read, they get aroused and begin to commit sin, you are not refined. If you say a Christian, and that your state will not permit you to go to heaven, it is not all who get born again that go to heaven. It is those that make it. Only those that make it. So if you didn't make it, if you didn't get fit for heaven, you will not be there. Though you once had an experience of salvation. Let nobody deceive you with this doctrine of security. 
eternal security. It is only for the sheep, those that have become sheep, and the sheep hear the voice of the Lord. Anybody living the sin is not hearing the voice of the Lord and is not a sheep of the Lord. And uh, people that speak heresies, they, their mouths utter doctrines that are selfish. Doctrines that oppose common, uh, uh, the, what is generally accepted that is right. They are given to saying things that will make them different from other people. So that it will be said, it is this man that has this wonderful teaching. And the thing has error. That tongue is unrefined. Refined tongues don't carry heresies. Now, the activities of unrefined tongues have caused terrible problems in people's lives. Unrefined tongues have destroyed lives. You hear of parents that open their mouths and curse their children because the children are stubborn. And then you say, it won't be well for you in life. This thing you did to me, it will be done by a child. And that we hold because the parent is like the little God over the offspring. Parents have cursed their children. Then when the children repented, the curse of the parents kept on hanging over them, making life miserable. Oh, other words that are damaging, setting the children, hindering them from going to the destruction that God had originally earmarked for them because the parents stood as a parent and then voiced out a curse. When Noah cursed the descendants of Ham, didn't you know what happened? So, God will want you to mind your tongue. Tongues have also drawn people into matrimonial problems. Many have separated because of unrefined tongues. The woman will open her mouth and say things against the husband. Husband will open her mouth, his mouth, and then give a jabbing blow to the woman. Knowing that the woman is weaker in mind, he will coin the world in such a way that it will drive through into her heart and the woman will fight with faith and will even die. So we go and hang themselves. Other ones will separate and say, go your way, I go my way. Many families, much of the divorce you see today stems from the tongue. So, the woman who is supposed to be subject to the husband was commanded, was told to take note in Proverbs chapter 21. Woman, sister that is married, right there, take note in Proverbs chapter 21. These are truths that God will know you, will have you know, and then walk on as you exercise yourself inviting him and involving him he will deliver you from that predicament in proverbs chapter 21 verse number 9 proverbs 21 and verse 9 it is better to dwell in the corner in a corner of the house top than with a brownie woman in a white house it is better to dwell in the corner of a house top in the chimney than to stay in a white house with a brown woman. If you are in the corner of the house top, the smoke from the, the kitchen will be wiring you there. That will make you miserable. But that misery of the smoke is better than the brown of a woman. That is what the scripture is saying. And in the same Proverbs, chapter number 27 and verse number 15, so if a woman does not have control of her tongue and is brawling and making noise, the man becomes irritated, miserable, and wants to exist. Proverbs chapter 27, verse number 15. A continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. A continual dropping. The kind of rain that never stops. It seems as if it has stopped. You are about to go out, it begins to fall again. From morning to night, the person had dressed up, wants to go out, and that rain began to fall. He stays away and stays away with a little. After one hour, it seems to have stopped. As he rises up to go out, it begins again. And that is how if you keep the person indoor, it makes somebody miserable. He said that is what happens when a woman is contentious, when she is argumentative, when she is full of strife. That is how the man will be feeling. And the man will become miserable. 
and the man may get angry if he is a carnal man if he had not been dealt with by the spirit of god he may get into violence and begin to be the wife and such a man is a madman a man that stretches his hand to beat his wife is mad that man is not fit to live he is not a man he is a boy it is only boys that beat women that beat girls a man doesn't raise his hand upon a woman a woman can slap a man and the man will keep quiet because if he retaliates the woman may die and then the law will come after him what makes him a man is he knows the consequences and implications of being violent anybody that showed violence to his wife is a boy he shouldn't call himself a man he is not qualified to marry now let's go to more scriptures for the man hear what peter said to you in first peter chapter 3 first peter chapter 3 as it pertains to you and uh, your wife dwelling together first peter chapter 3 reading verse number 7 first peter 3 7 likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heads together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered husbands you should dwell with them according to knowledge overlook those their feminine propensities those their feminine tendencies don't begin to quarrel with your wife and then begin to speak knowing that she is fragile your words can disorient her your words can disorganize her your words can give her hypertension so mind your words moderate your words don't lash out at her with words that is what peter was under inspiration was telling husbands that what you are being told as a man so it's not only women to control their tongue men should control their tongue should not open your mouth and begin to criticize your wife and say things that will break her down tongue has destroyed homes and many people are today not living well because of their tongue man or woman people have lost favor and even lost employment because of their tongue what they said made them lose favor or get made them to get sacked because they said what they shouldn't say and as a result of getting sacked they suffer the consequences of unemployment in Matthew 25, you hear the story of the lazy um, servant who took the money, the talent given to him, and hid it. When the master returned, look at his mouth. His mouth said, I know that you are an austere man. You take what does not belong to you. In the, because you love money so much, if you see what doesn't belong to you, you will take it because you love money. So I was afraid of losing it. That man's tongue led to the master's retaliation, scolding wicked servant, and sent him to outer darkness. It was his tongue. People have lost their jobs. People in the higher institution, there are people that are supposed to be professors, but because of pride, they will not bow to the panel of professors interviewing because those who are in that panel seem to be their juniors or who used to be their mates they will give their respect they will talk anyhow and every day every year they are being kept as associate prof not even associate prof because of tongue but jesus will want you to humble yourself as he did who was in heaven as a creator word of god and came to this world and behaved like a man and first at, at home with men be humble if your pastor deceives you and calls you a Christian when they are proud in you, he has deceived you seriously. Anybody that has pride is not a Christian. Jesus said, learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. If where you are attending, you are attending, whether it's a core fellowship, you may be a sponsor there, but they have allowed you to retain your pride. They have done you great disservice. They have done you great harm. At the end, you are going to say to those people, you are wicked. Don't allow that end to come. Come now. Give your life to Christ now and empty yourself of your pride. Because God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Mouth, the tongue has destroyed homes. The tongue has made people lose their jobs. Has made people lose their homes. Has broken relationships. Has made people lose favor has brought persecution untold the tongue has also brought untimely death based on what somebody said and that person killed him or her 
he insulted somebody. Like, like about two weeks or three weeks ago, I made mention of what was that was pushing snow from his side to another man's side, pushing it, pushing snow with his wife. And the man, other man came and said, Why? And these people began to curse the man. And this man just went into his house, got a rifle, and shot the two people dead, and went in and killed himself. The mouth responsible. Some people in the third world countries where there is no law, and then on the highway they meet the law enforcement agents, and then their tongue will begin to work, and some of them get killed. And somebody says, I will shoot you right away. And he says, You can't shoot me. And he shoots you and you die. Is the tongue. Remember, the tongue and the heart are connected. The state of the heart determines the behavior of the tongue. So if your tongue is unrefined, it tells you clearly that your heart is unrefined and it is dangerous to have an unrefined heart. The Lord, knowing the destructiveness of the tongue, warned against meddlesomeness. Because the tongue can destroy. He said, don't meddle. If you read Proverbs chapter number 26, verse 17, he talked about meddlesomeness. Don't meddle. Don't get involved in tail bearing. Don't get involved in flattering. Don't get involved in murmuring. All these activities bring destruction. The negative outputs or fruits of a diseased tongue attracts divine judgment. The negative fruits of a diseased tongue tongue that is already fighting the disease. That negative fruit attracts divine judgment. In Matthew chapter 12, soon be riding off right away. Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 and 37. Later, you take, connect to our platform. The outline for this message will be there. All the scriptures I read and the ones I didn't read are there for your perusal and exercise. In Matthew chapter 12, Verses 36 and 37. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Every word, even idle word, word that seemingly has no meaning, will be accounted for. So bad words will now tell you where it should be. Simple common sense will tell you if then if words that don't have value will be accounted for, then words that are negative, words that are damning will now tell you, will, you will now know that such will really be paid for. Victims and culprits of this diseased tongue must repent and call upon God for assistance without delay. If you find that this thing says so far about a disease song is applicable to you. Your tongue brings forth lies coming from the heart. Your tongue is a giving to striving, contention. Your mouth or issues vulgar words, obscene language, dirty words, immoral words come from your mouth. Your mouth exudes things that are negative, things that hit people bad. You are hurtful. You don't have control of your mouth. You don't have control of your tongue. It can bring out whatever you didn't even plan to bring out. If you have that, you need to go to God in prayer. Taking a decision to discipline your tongue, discipline yourself by God's assistance. There was a prophet called Isaiah who was preaching and preaching and preaching, condemning people and convicting people. A day came in his life when God unveiled his true status and he saw himself as a man of unclean lips in the midst of a people of unclean lips. He cried out, showed that he was in need, and the God of heaven sent an angel. A seraphim came, symbolically touched his lips, and the yoke of uncleanness was broken. The yoke of iniquity was broken and the man's tongue and heart became purified. That same experience is still possible. After you are born again, and you are seeing manifestation of these canalities, this tendency to talk and talk and talk, and even say things that are not true, and sterilize, and say things that your words are always making people to laugh and laugh and laugh. When the Lord gives you that second touch, that touch of sanctification, the purity that follows will not permit any dirty thing from coming forth. 
And that prayer can be made today. And that prayer should be made today. And that experience can be got today. That experience should be gotten today. If you call upon God from your heart, you didn't cover your sin because whosoever covers his sin shall not prosper. You didn't excuse yourself. The power of God will touch you. And then the beauty of the tongue will be seen. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you the treasures of this tongue. When you have allowed it to be purified, what can come out of it? The beauty that is planted, inherent in this tongue that is destructive. So for today, let all and sundry rise wherever they are. Tell him the Lord, Lord, you know that the Ethiopian cannot change his color. You know that this Pelepa cannot change his pulse. You know that I am so and so. My growth has been like this. I need your help. I don't like this thing again. I don't like this attitude. I uh, what has shown me that it's not good. Lord, help me. And then you make a, take a decision that you are going to consciously mind what you say. Consciously mind what word. Anytime any negative word comes out of your mouth, you will draw it. As you become conscious of it, the grace of God will take over. And a point comes when you are no longer struggling to have purity of words emanating from your tongue. Let us pray. Let's remember the boasted great things. Eternal Father, most gracious God, the God of Israel, the Holy One, who is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. I present all these who are connected unto you, who have heard your word, who have responded to your word by calling upon you. Oh Lord, I pray that that sanctifying grace comes upon them, that that yoke be broken, that those things that have been propelling them in the voicing out of negative things, of ungodly things, of things that are unscriptural, that that yoke be broken and a new tongue, a circumcised tongue that be granted them. Lord, remember that you have shown us that it is connected to the heart. So let the purification take place in the heart. Let the heart be purified and let the tongue come under control. Have your way, great father. Have your way, great father. Have your way, the sanctifier of Israel. You sanctified your people. You brought them out of Egypt into the land of the wilderness and gave them instructions and you assisted them to read the promised land. Sanctify your people. There are people that are unique. There are people that are special. Sanctify, purify their hearts and establish them in righteousness as they repent of the negative character or negative behavior of their tongues. Forgive and energize to do what is acceptable in the kingdom. In the name of Jesus. As they come again tomorrow, great father, and hear the positive area. We have dealt with the thing that can hinder them from having the best of the tongue so that they can do away with them. And then when we begin to talk about the, the, the potential of the tongue, Lord, let the awareness dawn on the people and let them step to another realm, another dimension of oppression in the kingdom. In thy great and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for a moment like this. Thank you for your servant you have used immensely to bless us and to bring this great knowledge that grants understanding to all that are under the sound of his voice. Father, we thank you and we pray that you bless him the more so that next time he comes to teach, he will perform optimally more than he has taught today. Thank you for the teaching praise granted to us in this diocese. Glory be to your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As you are getting seated, I want to, to know that this is a moment of, you know, blessing the Lord with your offering, honoring him with your offering. So you will see on the screen the bank account. It's a first bank account. Please do the needful and offer so that the Lord will bless you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. God bless you. God bless you. Do well of your one, Jehovah, I pray. Oh, Lord, I want to 
opportunity to offer right now we want to share the grace of fellowship before we go right so we share the grace the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ love of god sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be and abide with us now forevermore amen surely lord goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of my life i will dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen we're going to take the, uh, the closing hymn from the music ministers, The Last Stanza. Second night of this program. Good night.